Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Mealy. The purpose of this video is to help educate our patients about the upcoming shoulder arthroscopic procedure they're going to have performed. The shoulder is the most complex joint in the human body, and it also has the greatest range of motion. The shoulder joint is often referred to as a ball and socket type of joint. The humerus is the upper arm bone and its head is the ball and the glenoid is the socket. The scapula is often referred to as the shoulder blade and the glenoid is a part of the scapula. The clavicle or collarbone is above the shoulder joint and it attaches to the acromion. The articulating surfaces of the shoulder are covered with hyaline cartilage which provides a cushion between the bones and reduces friction. The glenoid has a ring of soft tissue surrounding its outer diameter, where it meets and articulates with the head of the humerus. This is called the glenoid labrum. The long head of the biceps tendon attaches to the top of the labrum. The shoulder is stabilized by its capsule and numerous ligaments. The head of the humerus, known as the humeral head, has several tendons attached to it. These tendons attach to muscles, and together they provide the shoulder's motion. These tendons and muscles make up what is known as the rotator cuff. Directly above these muscles and tendons are the acromion and the clavicle. The space above the rotator cuff and below the undersurface of the acromion is known as the subacromial space. The layer depicted here in green is the bursa, which provides lubrication in the subacromial space. This complex anatomy is what allows the shoulder its tremendous flexibility and range of motion. The arthroscope is what makes arthroscopy possible. The arthroscopic lens is less than three millimeters in diameter, yet it has high definition lenses which provide extraordinary visual detail. A high definition video camera attaches to the arthroscope which displays the video on large monitors. A high intensity light source also attaches to the arthroscope and transmits light through fiber optic cables. The fiber optic cable carries light from the light source through the arthroscope and to its tip where the camera lens is located. This lights the inside of the shoulder joint for a perfect view. When shoulder arthroscopy is performed, the shoulder is filled with sterile water known as saline solution. The flow and pressure is controlled by a fluid pump specifically designed for this purpose, which allows a safe and constant exchange of fluid. In the early days of shoulder arthroscopy, surgeons would only inspect the shoulder to confirm damage and then proceed with open surgical procedures as indicated. But as the decades have passed, thousands of unique and specialized miniature surgical instruments have been developed. These instruments have transformed shoulder arthroscopy into the specialized art form of today. We would like you to come to the hospital approximately two hours prior to your time of your surgery. We will ask that the morning of surgery you take all of your routine medications at approximately 5.30. For example, if you take a blood pressure medicine, we want you to take all of it at 5.30 with a sip of water. If you take thyroid medicine, we want you to take all of it with a sip of water. If you are a diabetic, we want you to take one half, I repeat, one half of your normal medication at 5.30. There's no food or liquid to be taken after midnight of the day prior to the surgery. When you arrive at the hospital, you will be asked a total of five times, I repeat, five times which shoulder that surgery is going to be performed on. This is our normal routine, is a national standard. The last person that will ask you which shoulder is me, and I personally will mark the shoulder with my initials on it. The shoulder surgery will take approximately 45 to minutes to one hour. You will, we will perform general anesthesia. You will be given a nerve block. What that is is the anesthesiologist will place an injection into your neck. It is very safe. It's very effective. We've done this over 10,000 times without any complications. 
An injection will be placed into your neck and will help numb your arm. So when you wake up, you will not have any pain in your arm. Sometimes your hand will be numb or might not even be able to move your fingers. There is no reason to be alarmed. This nerve block typically will last anywhere from 2 to 24 hours. Everybody is different. It's to help with pain. You will then be in the recovery room approximately two hours postoperatively. Then you will be discharged from the hospital in a sling and with an ice device. We ask that you leave the sling on until you see the physical therapist and not to remove it. You will be scheduled for physical therapy two days postoperatively. At the preoperative appointment, you will be given a prescription for physical therapy and a location. Please call them and be sure you have the physical therapy pre-arranged prior to having the surgery. We want to make sure you're in physical therapy two days postoperatively. Also at the preoperative visit, you will be given a prescription for pain medication. Please be sure you have this medication filled prior to your return home. So as the nerve block wears off, you can take the medication as prescribed on the label. We want you to start taking just some light fluids initially, and then some soups and salads and progress slowly. We then want you basically to spend the first 24 hours with ice on the shoulder as much as possible. We typically say hour on, hour off, two hours on, two hours off. As much as you can tolerate without becoming uncomfortable is appropriate. The following day, you can drive your car, you can go to Publix, you can do simple easy things. We then want you also to continue on icing. We typically like people to ice four times a day, 45 minutes for four weeks. Everything is four. Four times a day, 45 minutes, four weeks. We typically say breakfast, lunch, dinner, and bedtime. You will then start physical therapy postoperatively day two. At that visit with the therapist, they will change the dressing, they will put new band-aids on, they will then begin moving your shoulder in a specific range of motion as directed by myself in our postoperative therapy re regime. Depending upon if you have a shoulder arth arthroscopy or a full complete rotator cuff repair will dictate the amount of time you spend in therapy and the amount of time you're in a sling. For example, if you have just a shoulder arthroscopy where we do not need to perform a full complete rotator cuff repair using anchors, you typically will be in a sling for just two days and you will require approximately six weeks of physical therapy three times a week. If you have a full complete rotator cuff repair that requires arthroscopic anchors, you will be in a sling for approximately six weeks and will require approximately four months of physical therapy. Physical therapy is absolutely crucial to the success of arthroscopic shoulder surgery. It is absolutely imperative that you follow our post-operative physical therapy protocol. I can fix your rotator cuff tear, I can fix your labrum, but I cannot heal it. I need you and the therapist and your body to appropriately heal this, and the only way this can be occur is if you follow our post-operative physical therapy protocol. A post-operative visit will be scheduled 10 days post-operatively. At that point, we will remove the sutures, we will examine the wound, we will perform a physical exam of the shoulder, we will check your range of motion, we will obtain x-rays, and we will review your progress at that point in physical therapy. For more information regarding the exact type of arthroscopic surgery you're going to have performed, please go to our website, 